Hey y'all, I'm Dr. Marta Perez. Welcome back to 5-Minute Birth Prep Friday. Today's episode will be episode one, Am I in Labor? I get asked all the time by pregnant patients, how will I know when I'm in labor? And whereas some more experienced moms and your OB doctor want to give you a wink, I'm very bad at winking, and say, oh, you'll know. That's not very helpful, is it? But today I wanted to discuss how to know when you're in labor, what labor actually is, and some of the classifications we use when we're discussing labor. So let's get started. What is labor? Labor is the process where the fetus gets delivered by the uterus through strong, regular uterine contractions and dilation and effacement of the cervix. We're gonna break that down. Let's go over a quick anatomy lesson. On the sides of the uterus, you have the ovaries. They're actually outside the uterus and not a part of it, though they are connected. They create hormones, especially during the first few weeks of pregnancy in the first trimester, but after that, they get to take a break for the rest of pregnancy. So the fallopian tubes are the part of the uterus that where fertilization takes place. And then they travel into the endometrial cavity. The endometrial cavity is the lining of the uterus where the gestational tissue that later becomes the placenta implants. The walls of the uterus are actually made of muscle and they're not the same kind of muscle like our biceps. That's called skeletal muscle. The type of muscle that the uterus is is called smooth muscle. Smooth muscle isn't under our mind control. We can't tell our uterus to contract. It's controlled by different hormones and chemical messengers in our body. And at the bottom of the uterus is the cervix. The cervix is the stop cock of the uterus. And the inside of the cervix is where the baby is in the pregnancy. The outside of the cervix is accessible via the vagina to the outside world. Um, your doctor can examine it. That's where how we give pap smears, etc. So that's the parts of the uterus. So let's go back to labor. Basically labor is contractions and cervical dilation. We're gonna start with contractions. And labor isn't the only time we have contractions. Menstrual cramps are small contractions of the uterus as well, but the contractions with labor are very strong. Your uterus goes from being about the size of my fist to the size of a full-term baby. It can accommodate a lot, and that muscle is gonna work really, really hard. The cervix, the lower part, that is the neck of the uterus. I like to call it a stopcock. During most of pregnancy, it stays closed and relatively firm, but a firm type of cartilage, kind of like the harder cartilage at the top of the ear versus soft like the bottom of the ear. The strong, regular contractions of the uterine muscle are necessary to place pressure down upon the cervix to allow it to both dilate which means increase in its centimeters of openness and also to a face. It goes from being more like a cylinder shaped donut to being flat and opening. In medicine, we break human labor up to three different stages. The first stage of labor is the onset of strong uterine contractions causing cervical change all the way until full dilation of the cervix. The second stage of labor is the time from full dilation of the cervix to the time of birth. So it's the amount of time the patient is pushing. And finally, the third stage of labor is the time from birth of the baby until the placenta delivers. And, and the part you've been waiting for, Dr. Perez, how do I know if I'm in labor? So I'm gonna start by talking about what isn't labor. And I'm gonna start with one disclaimer. Disclaimer, if you are below 37 weeks and you feel strong contractions, you need to call your doctor right away. That's preterm labor. When you start having strong, regular contractions, start timing them. Sometimes you'll find that your contractions are only about 10 minutes apart. That's not really efficient enough to cause labor, although it could be early labor. They might. You also might notice that as you're timing them, you fall asleep, they go away, you have a little water and they sort of trail off. Well, that was something getting going, but it wasn't quite labor yet. But if you sit down in seven minutes, seven minutes, six minutes, six minutes, and they're painful, you're grabbing the edge of the couch, making a face, or at least taking really deep breaths to get through them. Depending on where you live and your individual situation, I recommend calling your doctor or OB provider when your contractions are about five to six minutes apart and they last that way for an hour without going away. Although this is a great thing to bring up with your OB provider, when do you want me to call? When you believe you're in labor and you get your bags, 
and you go to the hospital, you check in, a provider will check your cervix, monitor contractions in the baby, and then check again in an hour to see what the change is. Now sometimes there are strong regular contractions and you're say three centimeters and then you're three centimeters again in an hour. They might have you go walk around or maybe go home if you live nearby and come back if they stay strong or get stronger to see if there's been change. But sometimes you come in, they're three centimeters, and after another hour goes by, you're now four centimeters. That would mean you're in labor, you're having. So congratulations, you're probably going to be admitted for the birth of your child. All right, so in today's video, we covered what labor is and details about contractions and hormones and the cervix. Some things I alluded to, but that we didn't cover and will cover in the future include inductions of labor, augmentation of labor, how we don't know what causes labor, and the actual pushing and birth process. All of that will be in future episodes of 5 Minute Birth Prep. Thank you so much for joining me for my first episode of 5 Minute Birth Prep. I can't wait to cover so much more in the future. If you liked this content and you wanna learn more, don't forget to hit subscribe and to like this and to tell your friends and family. Also, don't forget over on my Instagram, I have more information about prenatal care, pregnancy, postpartum, periods, contraception, lots of stuff. So I'll see you over there as well.